The answer should be very plain. I don't have the gun. Simple. We should say it's us to an in I'd like to share with you a beautiful narration that appears in Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, wherein he speaks of the sweetness of this iman and belief that we have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken of the sweetness of iman. This means that the iman and the belief I have and you have has a taste to it. It has a taste far more delicious and sumptuous than any meal that you could have, than anything that one could taste, the taste of Iman. The question I have before we commence, how many of us have tasted the sweetness of belief? We say we are believers, we say we are submitters, which means we say we are mu'mineen and we say we are muslimin. But sometimes neither have we submitted nor is our belief up to the level it is supposed to be. Although life continues to be a struggle in the right direction, each one of us trying his or her best to achieve the pleasure of the Almighty, we need to remember never to lose focus upon this. So what is it that will make us achieve the sweetness and taste it? There are three qualities if they are found in a person that person will be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. And these qualities, some of these scholars have made mention of how each person will enjoy the sweetness of Iman according to the level of fulfillment of these qualities. The first quality that is made mention of by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this beautiful narration, an yakun Allahu wa rasooluhu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahuma. The person whom, for him, Allah and his messenger is more loved than anyone and everyone else, than anything and everything else. So if I were to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger more than my wealth, I will make sure that whatever I do to earn or spend is not in the displeasure of Allah, but within his pleasure. And on top of that, I make sure that I spend, and when I spend, it is because my love for Allah has exceeded my love for wealth. The same applies to my dress code. I cannot allow myself to love my limbs more than I love Allah. I cannot allow myself to love my hair more than I love Allah. I cannot allow myself to love my looks when I look in the mirror more than I love Allah. If I love Allah more than my looks, I will make sure I look something similar to that which will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I love Allah more than my hair, I will make sure, and this is more addressed to the sisters, that the hair is covered. Because that is what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will not be able to taste the sweetness of Iman if we allow our love for the jewelry we have, for the perfumes we have, Perhaps for the clothing we have, the hair, the limbs, the organs, the materialistic items, if I allow my love for that to exceed the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I may never ever taste the sweetness of this belief and iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Yes, we are living in this world and the Almighty has created it such that He has allowed us to make use of whatever this world has to offer. He has allowed us to enjoy within limits what this dunya and this world has to offer. But that does not mean we are allowed to let the love that we have for the world exceed the love for the Almighty whom we are going to return to. You have your family members, you have your motor vehicles, you have your relatives, you have your spouses, you have so many other people as well as materialistic items, remember. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us that should not distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. O you who believe, do not let your wealth or your family members divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes first, then everything else. 
If we love Allah most, we will make sure when we are earning, the earning is halal. When we are earning, we have not cheated anyone. We have not deceived anyone. We have worked hard. We have not stolen from our workplace, whether it is time or something material. We make sure we are honest. We make sure we are upright. We make sure we treat people fairly because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are his teachings. As for the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is very important for us to know that by following him, we display the love for him. If we do not follow him, it means we have had the guts to go against the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When someone invites us to an innovation, the answer should be very plain and simple. We should say, I don't have the guts to go against the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I don't have the guts to engage in an act of worship that he did not teach because he was sent to teach us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the love for Allah. This is the love for the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains this so beautifully by instructing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give us a powerful message. What is the message? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Say, if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me and Allah will love you. Follow who? Follow the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins for indeed he is most forgiving, most merciful. What an amazing ingredient. What an amazing composition. If we would like to show our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent someone to us instructing us and telling us. So if we were to follow the messenger, we have shown love for Allah as well as his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon him, his family members, and all the previous messengers, and all their companions. Amin.